Hello friends, I have a message that I would like to share with you. It's been brewing in my heart for days, so there is so much in here. I don't even know what to call this. I'm going to start with saying it is a personal share of my experience with shadow work, with personal awakening, meeting the dark goddess, what she represents in my life, why I am making these videos. This is just me pouring out so much that's inside of me that I am filled with right now. So I'm just gonna, I just need to let it rip. I tried to package this nicely and I couldn't. And this is a part of that wild feminine energy that moves through you in your life that you try to contain and it says, no, there is no containing this. You just need to express it, let it flow. So, you know, I want to first say the wild feminine archetype, that wild feminine energy has a purpose and integrity in structure. It's not just wild as in, um, someone like going batshit crazy, losing their mind, acting out in immature ways. It is that wild, erotic, primal structure of life and how things go together and operate and unfold, just like the seasons, just like the fall, when things start to fall apart and decompose and release that's for a purpose and there is structure there. So when I speak of this wild feminine archetype and this wild energy that's coming through me, there is purpose, there is structure, there is um, a reason and you are the ones who are going to be receiving on the other end of this. I am the container that it is flowing through and this video is a container that I am creating a safe space for to transmit these messages and energy to help you make more sense of what you might be going through in your life. So, wow, that right there. Whew. Let me just pause for one moment. Safe containers are very important. You. I, I want to share this story with you about when I started to first meet my shadows. I did not know what my shadows were. I did not really understand what that meant. I hear, I would hear these words shadow work. You know, sometimes you might come across someone's social media platform and they say they're a shadow worker. They're a shadow healer. They they lead people through the darkness. They go into the underworld. What the heck does that mean? If you're not in that world, it's hard to explain it. It sounds terrifying. So let me break this down for you. Um, this is going to tie into a safe space and a safe container. This is how my life unfolded in this one portion of my journey. And this is how it all played together, okay? While I'm telling you this story, it is going to ignite thoughts for you. So you can piece together things and, um, and it may not happen in the moment of this video, but it is energetic and it will sink in. So just on the other end of this video, where you are right now, just be willing and open to receive whatever's coming through. Just receive it and trust that it will show up in your life at the right time when you are ready, okay? This is how the mysteries of the feminine work. They're mysterious, and we don't know until we know. We just don't know. That's the shadow. We don't know until we know. So here I am in my life. I'm in my 20s, and I, my desire is, my biggest desire, the only thing I want in life is to be in love, to be loved. I want someone to love me. I want someone to 
care for me. I want to have an intimate relationship. And I, it isn't just like, oh, I want people to like me. Yeah, that was a part of it. But I wanted deep intimacy with a partner, with someone who would love me, who would see me, who would accept me for who I am. All parts of me, right? This was my biggest desire, my biggest longing. It sent me into mental spirals. And I would obsess over it and ask myself, why am I not good enough? Why is this not happening? So I went on this deep, deep, like search and longing for love. And this is how life works in mysterious ways. The universe was like, sure, we'll give you that. But you're going to have to meet us there. You're not just going to get this handed to you on a silver platter. You're going to have to do some work. So... I didn't know that at the time. I went through some relationships and they didn't work out. And, you know, it required me to do some personal work and look at myself and see what those things were about me that were not so attractive and things that would hurt people and why I would be repelling people. You know, I had to like do some deep digging and excavating of my own insecurities and my own um, things that were not so pleasant because let's face it you can't attract a loving intimate partner if you're being a bitch right that's where I was and I didn't know why it wasn't working and I didn't understand why I couldn't have this love finally I got to the point where I did meet someone who was so loving and so generous and so kind and we had the most intimate relationship. And when I say intimate, I mean like your ability to speak your truth to someone, those deep, dark, scary things that you really want to say, they're just like bubbling up in your soul and you can't hold them in anymore. And you just like want to say them, but you're scared to say them because if you say them, you're afraid you'll be exposed and in exposing yourself, you're afraid they'll run away, right? That is vulnerability. That's deep intimacy. And in order for me to get to the place where I was able to be that vulnerable, to experience deep intimacy, I needed to feel safe. I needed to feel safe with the person who was on the other end of that relationship, who was receiving me. I needed to know that when I did open my heart and expose those truths inside of me that were so scary for me to say, that they weren't going to take that precious, sensitive part of me and rip it to shreds. That's terrifying. So luckily I was in a relationship where that person was gentle and sensitive, had the capacity to take my vulnerability and hold it gently. And as they did that, as they received me, I all of a sudden it was like, oh, okay. I can breathe. Wow. It was like this heavy burden that was lifted and being held gently, gently held. And in that holding, my heart started to blossom like a rose, just like open. It was like slowly opening, slowly. I was breathing more. My heart would expand. I felt safer and safer. And through that, I learned how to hold a beautiful, safe space for my partner to share with me. So we could be accepting of each other's feelings. So we could have an open dialogue and speak with each other, communicate in ways where we could keep opening up and growing together. There's a few things I want to say about this. More than a few. Jesus. Okay. First of all, not all of us are in safe spaces like that. We may 
Maybe you're with a partner who is loving and kind and awesome. You guys have cool lives. But if you were to tell them something so deep that you needed to express, it might trigger a fear in them. And they unconsciously snap at you. They unconsciously ignore you. They start to treat you in ways that's the total opposite of what you were needing in that opening of yourself. When that happens, the person who is being triggered, who is behaving in an unconscious way, it's because you are triggering something deep within them that is a fear. They may not even know what the fear is. They just feel uncomfortable. Maybe they've never been in a relationship. Maybe their parents were not safe relationships, so they didn't learn it from the family. Maybe they never had a relationship before you that went well when something like that happened. It could be anything. So that is when someone starts to act out of fear and treat you in a way that is not loving and kind and supportive and generous and you don't understand why and maybe they don't understand why that is their shadow that they are acting out of and we don't know what our shadows are that's the point of our shadows is that they are dark we can't see them especially when we're living in unconscious ways when we are not aware of what we say, what we do. We do not have integrity with our word. We do not always speak our truth. That shadow can be ruling underneath our thoughts, can be ruling our lives because it's saying to us, let's stay safe, let's stay safe. That doesn't feel good, so I'm just going to bypass this situation. I'm gonna act like it didn't happen. I'm going to ignore it. I'm just gonna push it aside. I'm going to cause a scene and that, that will make that person just forget about it because that doesn't feel good to me. They're not consciously thinking this, but they may be acting in this way and it can be confusing. If you are on this spiritual journey, I didn't know I was on a spiritual journey. <laughs> until I knew, right? You never, you never ever know until you know. So once you become aware that your life is a spiritual journey, that your desires, my desire that I had to find that deep intimate love was a terrifying thing for me to go after. But the universe takes those things that we want so bad, those beautiful desires, and and wraps up these gifts of, here you go, like, let's give you this desire, but it's going to have to open you up. And in that opening, you're going to have to look at things and be honest with yourself to see if you can keep moving forward in that direction. Here, I'll give you this, I'll open it up now. What are you gonna do with that once you see it? Once you become fully aware of what that desire opened, can you, sit with it? Can you work with it? Can you keep opening up? This is the, when we do this work, when we are honest with ourselves, when we honor our heart and we take inspired action and then there's a reaction and then we, we keep taking inspired action, whether that means that we sit with it ourselves, whether we go to a mentor and seek help, therapy, seek help. How do I work through this? To work through it, to get to that end result that we desire, that is the embodiment. That's embodying your divinity. That's embodying your power, your birthright to create, create the life you love. <sighs> Man, this is going so much further. I'm just letting this flow because I know that whoever's listening to this, what is coming through me right now is definitely for you, but there are so many layers that I want to get to. I'm gonna stop this video here. 
pause it, upload it. This will be part one. Then I'm gonna go into part two. So part one, I just want to recap. Follow your desires, be honest with yourself, be truthful, take inspired action. Don't just, it is so easy to open up, get hurt and close back down, right? Have the courage to open up. Yes, we are going to get hurt sometimes, but when you get hurt, tend to that wound. Take care of it, heal it, seek guidance and help. Keep growing, keep opening, but make sure the containers that you are in are safe. When your containers are safe, it allows you to keep blossoming. You may think that your container is safe. This has happened to me so many times. Thought I was in a safe container, being held. It could be, it could be in a, um, it could be with someone who you trust as a spiritual leader. It could even be your body. I thought my body could handle this. Here I go, I do this thing, couldn't handle it, that wasn't safe. And then all of a sudden you put on the brakes and you're scared, you shut down because your fear is telling you that's not safe. Don't push through that. There is so much wisdom in that moment when you find out that was not safe. Okay, I'm just gonna like process this, let this teach me, and then I'm going to create when I'm ready, when I'm ready to go back there, I'm not gonna stay here because this, was, this would be too painful to stay here and stagnant in this hurt place. When I'm ready, I'm going to open up again, but in a safe container. So if it was a spiritual mentor that was holding you and for some reason it wasn't safe, when you're ready, you find a safe place and do it there. If your relationship you thought was safe and you wanted to be more intimate and vulnerable and you opened up and you found out it wasn't safe, do the personal work that you need to do to be strong enough to then say, okay, what needs to happen in this relationship in order for this to keep blossoming? How can I communicate with my partner that that's what I want? Will my partner be able to be receptive of creating a safer environment? And with that example I used earlier, like if this partner, if this partner says, oh, I want to be intimate, I want to be vulnerable, I want to open up, and this one's like, okay, okay, let's do this, and gets triggered, and then starts screaming at this one because it's scared, that's not safe, but that is because there are fears over here that need to be worked out. So this person then has some work to do. But if you're over here and you're the one who wanted to be vulnerable and this person has shit to work out, hold a safe space so this person can heal and grow. We take turns holding safe space. We don't shame. Shaming creates shadows. Shaming creates this part of us that says, I'm not good enough, and we suppress it and push it down, push it down, push it down. Every time you push it down, you are adding to that shadow aspect that goes deep in your unconscious, that starts to control your life through fear and says, I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why I can't be like this. I don't know why, but it doesn't feel good. That's your shadow. Okay, now I'm really going to stop this. I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to pause it. This is, um, I'm going to keep going in the next video. Okay. Whew. All right.